G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a bloodied plasma caster with Vats Criticals doing 50% more damage and hits have a chance to generate a stealth field. We're gonna retry the new meta that I've created. It's called Heavy Gunner Stealth. It's not gonna work, but maybe it'll work a little bit better than I did with the minigun because we're not constantly firing that and broadcasting our position to everything within a 5k radius. So maybe this might work if we keep our distance. I doubt that it would, but it'd be interesting to try. So that would make it a bloodied lucky ghost player. Plasma Caster. Ooh, Ghost. Do you remember Ghost from Fallout New Vegas? You could sneak up on her. Anyway, so what I've got on this thing is a line sniper barrel that'll help us with the range, I suppose, keeping that accuracy and the uh, damage drop off to a far distance. And then we've got the calibrated capacitor. I could increase the damage here with a, a prime receiver on this or the prime capacitor, but it's way better off in terms of damage output going to the calibrated capacitor because we're going to be smashing crits every other shot because our luck will be super high thanks to my revised shotgun attuned build of this. Um, I've also shifted some points over from intelligence to luck because I don't need five points for explosive uh, demolition experts. So we've got a couple for nerd rage and a little bit extra but the rest of them are in strength 50. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. Unfortunately, you can't put reflex sights on this. The sights on these are pretty ordinary. So giving us an extra edge in vats with a reflex sight in the future would be nice. Don't expect it to happen. I'm going to throw that out there into the ether. You never know what might catch on. So, we've got luck and load and barbarian and strength already, which leaves us nine points to chuck on these heavy gunner perks. There they go. We've got enough room over here in luck to chuck on uh, Bloody Mess. We've got Serendipity for survivability purposes, Critical Savvy and Better Criticals to smash out damage and uh, guaranteed hits as much as possible. Grim Reaper Sprint is there. If we get a big gun food chain, we might be able to activate that and keep gunning with our Plasma Cast. It's going to be pretty awesome if that happens. We've got Tenderizer. Uh, we've also got Follow Through. If we want to get a quick, cheeky sneak attack critical, we can boost our damage with Tenderizer and that. All multiplicative. Um, don't know if that stacks to 44% or to 50%. Or maybe even higher. Uh, we've also got fireproof for dense chest piece, so grenades will not hurt us. We've got a couple of uh, filler perks in uh, perception here. Concentrated fire is nice of shooting at the head, but glow sight and fire on the hold, they're kind of just filler. But we're going to see where our grenades are landing, right? And you can throw them further. Might one of these days just make a giant pile of plasma grenades and just run around grenading everything. That'd be interesting. I probably want to do it with frag grenades, though, because um, I think you can still blow yourself up with a dense chest piece with uh, plasma grenades because some of their damage is of the energy variety, which is a little bit different than the explosive ballistic, which I s seem to uh, be able to shrug off all the time. So now we're doing 133 ballistic and energy damage from 76. So, you know, that's pretty good. Decent damage numbers, and I uh, dare say a fairly balanced approach. Okay, now we're in Nerd Rage after a quick bout of dysentery cured by the auto dock over there. Note these things, I've taken a bunch of these uh, marsupial serums and bird bone serums and those just to, you know, help me get rid of all of these debuffs. We've still got the minus four from Eagle Eyes, but that's only strength and that's not going to help our damage output like you would think a uh, melee build gives you. Now we're doing 247, 24-7, days and hours of the week or something. Okay, so here we are outside of uh, Mariposa military base, and we're going to use our turbo plasma rifle here. <laughs> it's, I don't know what a turbo attached to this thing would make it better. Maybe it's just a little bit of jargon that they threw on the front of the plasma rifle. Uh, wait, was it a rifle or caster back then? A, a turbo plasma caster. And we're going to get crits at a frequency that I think even the OG Vault Dweller would probably cream in their pants for. Or, uh, whatever the equivalent is, if they're a female. Uh, uh, let's not go into that. But anyways, I'm leaving goo piles everywhere, which is nice. And we're killing things with the uh, clinical efficiency of the assassination of Bin Laden here. So, yeah, things are going pretty well. Just wanted to start off on that rock over there, just so we could see this thing's accuracy at range. Obviously, it's really good at range already, because of the long-ass barrel and the big old range set on this. But pair that with all of this bloody perception... Yes, very nice. And that's not even max. I could possibly take a couple of more points out of intelligence just to fuel that, which I could have done, but I didn't because I'm lazy, and also I didn't think that until now. Okay, we're in the side of Mariposa now, and I've got nothing better to talk about except for to pick on the lore of the <laughs> of the of the Fallout 
1 and 2 games, the games that were set in the uh, second dimension, not the third dimension like the later Bethesda and then Obsidian releases. Kind of funny that. Also, have we had a stealth field go off yet? I don't think we have. It looks like we can one-shot these guys uh, if we get a crit, which is nice. Nice little uh, 1,200 to the face. And that one goes down too. Just going to stim pack because I can. Uh, because why not? I'll just keep the video rolling at a speed. I've got a bunch of these super stim packs for free, so I'm basically unkillable if I jam one in my system. But yes, uh, they have like a turbo plasma rifle. I don't know if uh, you'll... Like, I don't know what drawing air into a plasma gun does to the projectiles. Maybe it makes them quicker. Do you reckon when they reload it, it makes the turbo noise that you see all the bloody subi, subi drivers make when they change gears? So it'd be like, stu -tu 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 -tu, when you maybe pull out the magazine. I don't know, that sounds pretty good, but you know what doesn't make sense about that? All of the cars are powered by batteries, so what would a turbo do? What pushing air into a battery do? You don't need to push any pistons with combustion explosions. You just press the accelerator button and it makes a bloody... You know, I've, I've used electric bloody uh, scissor lifts before and they make a bloody noise. And they sound like shit. So I don't want to drive a Chrysler's Highwayman. What a piece of shit car. You know what I want to drive? I want to drive my Commodore. Someone add... Someone add a, a 2013 VF sports wagon... A VF Series 1 sports wagon with a 6 litre V8. Can, you, can we put that in Fallout 2? Might actually make it playable. And then you, you you pull apart the plasma rifle, the turbo plasma rifle in Fallout 1 and stick the turbo in the L77. So then instead of like killing stuff with guns and doing other boring stuff, you just cruise around in your sports wagon and then, I don't know, go to New Reno and do some six skids and then get money. Look, I know how to make Fallout 2 better. If, it's a shame that I wasn't around when they could have when they made it because I would have made it so much better. And we're done here. I'm gonna stop talking shit now. Now in close quarters, this thing with its rate of fire of not very much is a little bit clumsy, and it'd be mo even more clumsy in real life because if I had try to turn around in this door frame, that barrel was it, it clips right through here. But I'd have to. I'd have to angle the thing around, so, you know, there's a lot of games that really don't get, uh, I mean, it's it's hard to do, right? Where you've got this big, long weapon in a close quarters environment, but, you know, there's a reason why they use all SMGs and shit and short-barreled stuff in uh, the, uh, the Rainbow Six Siege games, right? But you don't get any of that, so... It's probably a loss, a lot less clumsy than it ought to be. It's gen it's just generally the rate of fire and the missing the 90% shots that'll get you. And then sometimes kicking up explosions for no reason. Now, I'm kind of backed myself into a corner here, but luckily the ghouls haven't developed proper pathing skills. See, they'll get that a little bit later on as they develop um, a couple of centuries from now in Fallout 4. What the fuck? What? Just trip over? Alright then. God only knows what killed me just now. There's, there's nothing around. There was no ghouls. I just got sneak attack critted. That, that's like being stealth commander. That's what it feels like. Now that I've been on the receiving end of it, it's not going to make me stop. They will pay for this death in many ghoul bloods. And a two-shot kill against a giant fat-ass ghoul like that, I'm going to say that that's really good. I very much like the ammo efficiency of the plasma casters. They're like... It's kind of like the energy variant um, of the, the Gatling gun with much less round capacity and kind of slow and bullets that, that, you know, make it a better close quarters weapon because they're not hit scan. Funny. Um, but it's like an energy version of the hard hitting slow firing thing. It's like it's natural evolution, I guess. I mean, there's a little bit of gap between here and 50 cal machine guns, but you get it. I kind of like the idea that the energy weapons in this game, or in any game in general, are supposed to be just better in every single way. But they don't really get that right a lot. And I'd like to say that the Plasma Caster is one of the only weapons that really gets it right. It cuts out its own little niche for itself. Stop right there, Bambi. <laughs> it cuts its own little niche out for itself. It feels good. It's a good weapon. It's probably one of the better additions to Wasteland. Is it's a very consistently decent weapon. I, I quite like it. 
All right, time to regain sniping with this. And I could aim without using VAS just to show you the, the projectile's time, but look, aiming down sight with this thing in first person, it's not the greatest. And you fire giant basketball projectiles, so sometimes they just get clipped on geometry, but that's okay. We can forgive that because it fires giant basketballs of plasma at your enemies and they feel like they hit hard. Like, if I got hit in the face by a giant basketball-sized plasma bolt, I'm thinking I'm gonna explode and melt all over the bloody place. And it happens, evidently, quite a lot. So, is that full adrenaline at this point? It is, in fact. And we even get a Scorched Officer just to uh, sink it in. So, what we'll do is, uh, mosey on over, swan over here, and just, like, sneak attack crit, and, uh... That's critical him, just to double up on that. Ooh, he's out and about already. I've got a critical ready. I'm going for it. Efficient takedown. I, I don't know if we missed a few shots there or that was lag, but, you know, that was quick. A very good time to kill. But the worst is not over yet. Alright, looks like the crabs haven't started a little turf war with the crackheads just yet. And that's a lot of 95% whiffs. A little bit of XCOM is leaking into my Fallout 76 copy today. I'm going to have to clean out my hard drive for that. Oh boy, I can't I can't shoot this guy because he's... I can lock on in VATS, but it immediately it's like... The VATS is like, no bro, you can't do that. Sorry for the VAT seizure that I just caused. That I'm sure that wasn't very nice to watch. But sometimes you get a shot in VATS and then... Oh, Queen's out already. Oh, I'm going for it. Come on, baby. One mag this some bitch. Yes, didn't even take a hit, which is kind of lucky, I guess, because sometimes she hits you despite being in caution anyway. I think we got a little bit lucky there with the uh, sneak crit, and that was a three-shot kill. Since this thing fires missiles as far as the game concerned, you'll actually notice sometimes that your plasma bolts like curve under the target, which is actually really awesome to look at. Kind of, kind of just thinking about how much I like the plasma caster in this game at the moment, and it's a revelation. I think I need to put this out there, but if you've got a heavy gunner build, main a plasma caster. They, they're good. They're really good. If you can get a good roll, then you're gonna be laughing. But even if you get a mediocre roll, what do you get from it? Well, it's a guaranteed legendary at the very most. You can't trade them, which is annoying if you know players want to share their toys with everyone else or other unsavory active players, um, but they're good, they're super ammo efficient, they hit like a truck, and they're just a little bit different. If you're bored of the monotony of holding down the trigger and listen to your 50 cal, although I can definitely see the appeal in that sort of behavior, well, pick up a plasma cast to play around a little bit, and you'll be rewarded with Impressive DPS. Killing a Scorch Beast in seven shots like that. You can't knock it. It's not the fastest time to kill, but seven shots in a Scorch Beast, you'll be hard pressed to find another heavy gun that can do that. Here's another Mylert Queen, which seems to be not taking the. Uh... In fact, I killed the level Hundy one fast, so I'm just going to grab a bit of cover here. Slip back in the caution, you bet. We get a bit of gun fill action here. Yeah, baby. Smash that damage on. We'll just move slightly to the uh, left over here so we don't get spat on. And here comes the cavalry. Now, these guys are fun because they're basically free gun foo fodder. Run all you want, mate. You'll only die tired. And also a tired goo pile. Very nice. Liking this. Now, it used to be when Wastelanders first come out, you could only roll these things by crafting them, which means you need a bunch of junk and mist components to re-roll legendary effects. You still craft them like that, you could get lucky and craft one that's really good, but you can now re-roll them normally like legendaries, so yeah, they're good. Anything with crit damage, slap a, a calibrated capacitor on and maybe start thinking about pushing your build in a critical luck-heavy direction, and you're gonna be laughing, mate. It's gonna be tops. Obviously, troubles at range here are uh, apparent. Even for a giant Scorch Beast target like that, I'm still struggling to hit it. There's one. Full console player, I am chat. I'm not even streaming when I said chat. 
We'll creep in a little bit further. That's okay. This thing's at its strongest when it's in bats anyway. This Squatch Beast is being strangely standoffish right now. I've got a couple of hits in. Nothing too much to write home about. I'm glad you attacked me with a knife and not your fist because I would have gotten one shot just then. Look at those plasma bolts bending like Beckham. Look at that. That's what you want to see. And that is why you want to use a plasma caster. <laughs> What isn't awesome about seeing your projectiles just magically bend around physics and everything? Let's see if we can't pull the rabbit out of the hat here. I'm just going to do a right away just in case. Nope. Nah. I think we got a little bit too close to the hole because that Scorch Beast was off vibing in some other town. He was off with the fairies. He didn't want any part of this. And why would he? He got wrecked as soon as he decided to get close enough. So yeah, Bloody Lucky Plasma Caster. I will definitely be rolling for these. I've got an Anti-Armor Lucky one, which I can utilize right now. It, I guess it just means that the uh, non-criticals might do slightly better against armored enemies. But, I mean, if I'm at Nerd Rage Threshold to achieve this anyway. You don't have to be at Nerd Rage if you roll one with uh, less VATS cost. You can be like 40 to 50% health if you've got a luck focus build. So, you know, you can have a little bit of tankiness about you, but... You know, you don't get all of these other s stupidly sexually awesome stats. Hey, my luck isn't even at 33. Have I been stooging myself all video? I reckon I have, actually. Yeah, I have. See, what I really should have done is uh, do that. Just pretend that I was at luck 33 for the rest of the video. I mean... Sometimes I get the double crits anyway, so it's fine. I think you get the idea, like, you can't really go much better than I just did, but it is possible, so, I don't know, I'm gonna say that I did that on purpose to leave out the, to, you know, make other players actually do it properly <laughs> and try it out for themselves, because I have done this, like, off-screen, just testing it out, and it is a whole lot of fun, and we've almost hit 300 uh, ballistic and energy with all of that adrenaline, which is real nice. Just think about how high that could be with buffs too. Um, another thing about this is that you'll find that you'll do a ton of damage per shot if a critical lands to Earl or the Queen, so you can get a couple of shots in that way, and then you can basically guarantee the loot, and you won't have to waste 50 pounds of ammo doing that. So it's just a weapon that everyone needs to get. It's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like what the Gatling gun was before the one wasteland patch. We kind of need the extra damage now. This thing gets it for us just, you know, at range. She's a little bit on the uh, unpredictable side since his projectiles are slow. But that's okay. We love the plasma caster anyway. Thank you very much for watching, guys.